Tozo has been known for delivering great value earbuds in the under $80 price bracket, but the subject of today's review plays in a different league as the Golden X1 is the first premium offering from the company. You get dual drivers, ADEX support, wireless charging, customizable ANC and many more features, but what I'm curious about is how the earbuds can actually perform in real life. Hi everyone, my name is Andy and you're watching Andy's Tech Tone. Before the deep dive into the details, I have to tell you that I got the earbuds from the manufacturer for testing, but I'm not getting paid for doing this video, nor was I being influenced by anybody. So everything you hear today is my honest and unfiltered opinion. And starting with the design of the Golden X1, this is where I'm a bit disappointed, as both the case and the buds themselves come with that good old black plastic design we have seen a thousand times already. There is nothing new or exciting here, but maybe it's a good thing, as from a fit and comfort point of view, I can hardly find anything to fault with the buds. The X1 sits in my ears securely, even during running, which is always a good starting point. Then there is the nano coating and the IPX6 rate which means that the earbuds can resist not only sweat and splashes, but also high pressure heavy sprays of water too. Which in my understanding means that even though you cannot submerge them into water, you can in fact rinse them under tap water, which can come in handy after a sweat heavy workout. The earbuds are also quite robustly built, so there should be no issues with longevity here. In terms of their size, the X1 buds are not the smallest there are, but they only weigh in at around 5.7 grams each. They are very comfortable to wear for hours on end, and you get 6 sets of silicone ear tips to play around with. With the buds, we get these fins, wings or mini stems, but whatever they might be, they come in handy when you want to grab the earbuds and take them out of the case or put them in your ears. So all in all, even if the design feels a bit dated at first, the earbuds work pretty well as far as comfort, fit and day-to-day -day use are concerned. Onto the battery case, well, I find it similarly uninspired in terms of its look, as it's just another medium-sized black plastic case with a loose lid, which does not only flop around easily when opened, but it also makes some squeaky noises, and that does not smell premium at all. But you probably noticed the battery status LED, which turn on for a couple of seconds when you open up the lid. This is indeed a very cool feature of the case. And that LED is not only unique, but seeing the exact percentage of how much charge you have left in the case can also prove to be useful in everyday use. So for example, you will know exactly when to put the case on a wireless charging plate, as the Tozo X1 supports the Qi wireless charging standard. And talking about charging takes us to battery life. Now, the official specs say that the earbuds can last up to 8 hours on a single charge, but my own tests came up a little short of that number. The best case scenario was 6 hours and 6 minutes with using the AAC codec on iOS and with the ANC turned off. The worst case scenario is 3 hours and 9 minutes of use with both the LDAC codec and the active noise cancellation turned on. These are not quite class leading results, but the case can fully recharge the buds about 3 times, which gives us a decent overall playtime. Next up is connection. With the X1 we get a Bluetooth 5.3 compliant chip on board, which supports the LDAC audio codec, multi-point use and mono mode. Mono mode is a basic feature these days and it means that you can use each of the earbuds on its own, independently from the other. Multipoint on the other hand is still considered a premium feature and implementing it is not always without hiccups. But in this case, Tozo has managed to find a way to make it work smoothly. Switching between connected devices happens automatically, with only a minimal lag, but you can also switch between previously paired devices manually. The LDAC codec remains available if one or both connected devices are compatible, and of course multipoint works across all platforms, be it Mac, Windows, Android or iOS. I had no connection issues or signal dropouts during my tests, regardless of the device or the audio codec I used with one caveat. I found that on my Sony Xperia 5 Mark II, the volume is severely limited with the LDAC codec in use. It's like there is a cap at around 40 or 50% of volume. And that cap is gone immediately when switching to AAC or switching to iOS altogether. 
The sudden jump in volume is not only annoying, but I also don't understand what's happening there in the first place. So not sure what's going on, as I also tested the One More Evo and the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro along with the X1, as all three of these earbuds are LDAC compatible, and only the Tozo Buds have this issue. If you guys know what could cause such a problem, let me know in the comments. Moving on with the connection, there is the lack of a dedicated game mode, which is no big deal for me as I'm no gamer, but hardcore low latency enthusiasts will have to find another solution regardless whether they use Android or iOS. That said, casual gaming and watching videos is all good of course. And in case you are wondering what the microphones can do on these earbuds when it comes to making phone calls, here is a quick audio sample for you. So this is the audio quality you can expect from the Tozo Golden X1 buds in a quiet environment. But here is a more challenging test for you. This time I'm outside on a sunny but windy day and there is also some traffic noise in the background. So this is the audio quality you can expect from the microphone on the Tozo Golden X1 earbuds in such conditions. Onto the touch controls, we get a comprehensive list of available functions across the touch-sensitive interfaces on the buds. You can control play, pause, volume, tracks, your voice assistant and phone calls, plus you can switch between noise cancelling, transparency and normal modes. All the tapping actions get registered quickly and accurately, and to some degree you can remap them in the app, but for whatever reason, not all the tapping actions can be customized. For example, the single tap and the triple tap actions on the left bud are dedicated to switching between the different ambient modes and that cannot be changed. On the right bud, however, the functionality of the single tap action can be both customized and deactivated, while the triple tap will always be your voice assistant. So at the end of the day you cannot really change things around freely, but at least we got all the functions we might ever need and the future firmware update can easily give us more flexibility in setting up the touch controls. What no future update can give us however is smart sensors and since the bots come without one, we will never get automatic play and pause with the Tozo Golden X1. And other than upgrading your earbuds, the Tozo smartphone app, which is available on both Android and iOS, offers you a few other handy features too. There are three main pages in the app. The first one is called EarPrint, which allows you to run some tests, and based on the results, the algorithm will create a custom frequency curve to match the sound of the buds to your hearing. I personally never really like these tests as regardless of whether they are accurate or not, I'm not quite convinced that EQing should be based on your actual hearing. I believe it should rather be tailored to your personal taste and preferences in music and since you cannot tweak the earprint curve manually, you are stuck with whatever settings the test might come up with. Of course, your mileage might vary and the earprint feature can be useful if it happens to deliver a sound profile you like. But if you want more control over the sound signature of your earbuds, then you should jump straight to the sound effect page in the app where you can find the 10 band manual equalizer. Here we also get a bunch of EQ presets, all of which can be tweaked to your liking. Multiple custom settings can be saved and the earbuds themselves respond quite well to EQing, so that should satisfy even the most hardcore EQ aficionados. And onto the third page in the app, this is where you can find the different ANC modes. And there are six of these modes to be exact. There is normal, which is ANC turned off, then there is noise cancellation, transparency, leisure, wind noise reduction and the custom mode. And to put the ANC performance into some context, it's time to place the X1 somewhere in the rankings. So the ANC is nowhere near the level of that of the most premium models from Bose, Sony or Apple. And since the X1 buds cost only $150 as of making this video, I would rather say that they compete with the likes of the One More Evo or the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro. And if you look at the spec sheets, we can see plenty features that these three buds have in common. There is the two-way speaker design, the LDAC support, the wireless charging, the multipoint use, or the fairly sophisticated smartphone app with hearing tests and custom ANC modes just to name a few. 
So compared to its rivals, the Tozo X1 can deliver a similar ANC performance, and especially in the higher end of the frequency range, it even outperforms the other two. But lower pitch humming and rumbling noises do not get tamed as much as on either the Evo or on the Liberty 3 Pro. Transparency mode sounds a bit muffled on the X1 when compared to the others, so you won't get such over-amplified surrounding noises, which can be a good thing. Having a quick conversation should be okay too, but we are not getting such a natural or neutral sounding transparency as on the AirPods Pro 2 for example. But when it comes to wind noise, it is close. I mean Apple's wind noise reduction algorithm is still the best on the market by far, but Tozo have done a great job with the X1 in that regard. Wind noise is definitely less of an issue on the X1 than it is on the One More or the Soundcore Buds, regardless of what mode we are using. Plus we get a separate wind noise reduction mode in the app if you want to get rid of the last bits of that whooshing noise. So it's best to be used outside of course, while the leisure mode works rather well indoors or in less noisy environments. The custom mode has a slider where you can adjust the strength of the ANC, but I have three issues with that. First, it does not always work. Second, even if it does work, it does not make that big of a difference as you might want. And third, using the touch controls you can only toggle between noise cancellation, normal and transparency, so your custom mode is not available through the earbuds. But out of the six modes, five works perfectly fine, and at the end of the day the ANC gives you a decent all-round performance, which is at least on par with the best in class. And onto the sound quality, let's see what the two-way speaker design has to offer. So you can find a 12mm dynamic driver and the balanced armature driver in the earbuds. The former is responsible for the lower frequencies, while the latter delivers the treble. And while we only get just enough bass to keep most people happy, there is an abundance of energy in the treble. The earbuds can convey plenty top end detail and there is a higher than average level of crispiness in the sound. If you like this kind of clear, bright and dynamic sound, that's fine and it can be sort of impressive for a minute or two. But you might want to pull down the highs in the app a little, so the earbuds remain comfortable to listen to in the long run, as in my experience, ear fatigue can kick in easily with this sort of a sound. Onto the base, it is powerful enough, tight and well controlled. It might be a touch limited in terms of mid-bass punch, but it's exactly the kind of quick, lean and snappy bass I like the most. There is no sign of muddiness and partly thanks to that, the mids have a great presence and a lively sound. Male and female vocals and all instruments come through with clarity and with a natural timbre. It's usually the bass which overpowers the mids, but in this case it's the bright upper mids or lower highs that draw your attention away from the rest of the frequency range. But it's easier to fix with careful EQing than getting rid of that boomy and hefty bass of the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro for example. The sound of the X1 is also much more open with a wider sound stage. The one more Evo lacks some kick in the bass compared to the X1, but it makes up for it with a more three-dimensional sound stage and with a more pinpoint imaging and better separation. The X1 sounds the most dynamic and crisp overall, the Liberty 3 Pro is more closed in and rather warm and bass heavy, while the Evo is a touch more open with a more airy and neutral character. That said, all three buds can be tweaked easily through the EQ settings in their respective smartphone apps, but maybe it's the X1 which has the best potential to sound excellent across the board. Bass could be pulled up, while the highs should be tamed just a tiny bit to get a truly premium sound out of these Tuzo buds. But there is one more thing to add, and that's the fact that the X1 gets a not so subtle boost in the bass when the ANC is turned on. So you have to keep that in mind when EQing the buds. I don't like when earbuds have this noticeable shift in sound between the different ANC modes, but at least the good news is that you can create two separate sound profiles, one for noise cancelling and another one for normal mode, which can compensate for this jump in the sound character of the X1. 
And to wrap things up, I have to say that what Tozo did with their flagship earbuds is mostly impressive. I say impressive because this is their first attempt in a more premium segment, and they created something that can be easily compared to the best in class. But I only say mostly impressive because the X1 is not without fault. The battery life is not the best and something funky is going on with the LDAC codec 2, plus we get no smart sensors. But we get dual drivers with a potentially excellent sound, a good app with great EQ features, a well-implemented multipoint, decent ANC with good transparency and excellent wind noise performance, and wireless charging. In my opinion, the design is a bit on the boring side of things, but we get first class comfort and a better than average IP rating. And let's not forget about that unique little display inside the case either. The competition is fierce, but the Tozo Buds can easily make it to the top of your list depending on your priorities and personal taste. And that was my take on the Tozo Golden X1. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to leave a comment should you have anything to add or ask. Thanks for watching, see you all in the next one.